Okay, developing, developing. Only two people. Anyone else still thinking? Mm, okay. So quite a few people developing. Aisha says no specific. All right. So now we're going to ask Aisha, why do you say no, nothing, no specific style? Why is that? Uh, perhaps, yeah. Because actually we want all this in a leader. Uh, <laughs> leader should be able to delegate, should be able to give a, 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 what, a clear direction and also at the same time helping their staff or subordinate and good at problem solving so i think that is the perfect leader that I, i'm not sure um whether it is too ambitious or not but of course uh like uh the social style just now uh there are some aspect that uh a leader perhaps um have a dominant i mean inclined towards uh, delegating but uh, minor in in terms of developing something like that lah. That's why there's no specific. My answer is that there's no specific um uh, style of leadership in this. Yeah. To the Thank question. you very much. <laughs> Thank you for the answer. <laughs> so the an the answer is if you had listened to the idea um, that was put forth uh, in the model called situational leadership, the idea here is that leaders should be able to adapt their behavior depending on their employee's situation. Okay, so I'll say it again. Eh? They should be able to adapt their behavior based on their employee's situation. Now, this is no longer about social style anymore. It is about the approach of how we give them the work, how we support them during the work. So a good leader is someone who can adapt or in this case, we call this versatility. Be able to be versatile enough to change their behaviors depending on the situation of the employee. So, the characteristics of each one of these, directing is when the leader decides alone. And you find that there are, you know, directing leaders were just like that. Okay, I have veto power. They tell you exactly what, when, why, and how to do the job. And they acknowledge the employee for complying. Good boy, listen to me. <laughs> okay, so listen, you're going to see a comparison between the four. Directing style, how they do this, they acknowledge the employee for complying to what they told them to do. For delegating, here the individual decides alone without the assistance of the boss. So they have to figure out how they want to, to, to do the work. And they also maintain limited communication with the supervisor, with the superior. And they, the, the supervisor acknowledges their expertise and taking responsibility. I apologize, that bullet point number four should not be there. That's, a, that's an error. So in the first one, in directing, we say, good boy, yeah, because you listen to me. Here we say, good boy, because you take responsibility. Okay, you, you, we, we recognize that you are an expert in this. And this is what, what Bill Gates likes to say, right? He says, I hire people who are smarter than me so that they can give me advice on what to do. This is no longer the era. 2021 is no longer the era of top-down management where the people at the top are smarter and have more experience. 2021 and above and beyond is the era of specialization. So anybody within your organization, um, if you are managing them, if you're leading them, then what you are is you are a conductor of an orchestra. Yeah, you are managing these people together to create something that's beautiful. But you yourself might not be able to play the piano well, or the trombone, or the violin, or the guitar, or the drums, but you know how you can, you can get them to work together. So in, in this, the delegation, you have the ability to get them to do the work without actually needing you there. For developing, we say the individual decides, not alone, but decides with the support of the leader. The leader uses open-ended, powerful questions and active listening to help them develop. Because why? Low directive means we don't give them instructions. 
we ask them to make sense of the instructions and figure out how to move forward uh, uh, to fix their problems. So if we give them the, the, the solution on the spot, what is that? What is that? That is then problem solving, which we'll talk about a bit later. Here we say good boy or good girl by giving recognition for seeking support and owning next steps. So if they come to you and say, um, boss, I have a problem. I would like to discuss with you. So this is where you say, good, this is very good. Okay, so thank you for coming to me. Uh, let's see how I can help you fix your problem. But in delegating, if they come to say, I have a problem, the, the delegating style will say, um, but you're the expert in this, you go fix it. The last one, of course, is problem solving. And we say here, the manager or the leader owns the decision with input. So this is a bit of the other way around. The leader <coughs> is the one who decides, okay? But the input comes from the employee. So I'm sure you've done this before. Um, your employee comes to you with a problem, says, boss, I don't know how to do this. Lah. Okay, tell you what, we don't have enough time for me to teach you how to do this. So I'm going to do this report, but I want you to sit next to me and I want you to watch. Okay, so here we go. All right, this is the first page of the report. Yeah? Okay, um, Okay. what do you put in paragraph number one? Nak letak apa kat situ? What should you put? And then you listen and they say, you put this. No, bukan. You put this. Watch carefully. So this is a process of problem solving where you get their input, you know, but you make the decision. Because why you want to teach them, you want to show them what it looks like. Then here is also a two-way dialogue. There's listening and there's influencing. Uh, there's also encouraging the sharing of new ideas and alternatives by the employee. And we acknowledge them for their ideas. So problem solving, if you use it with your employees, you can actually get them to be part of the problem solving process. When you overuse too much, then eventually what happens is you become the only one solving all of it. And if I were to give you an analogy, right? Um, how many people here have children? Give me an ME. So I've already told you I have five children. So how many people here have kids? Give me an ME in the chat. Okay. Now, some of you might have had your children play a puzzle block. Okay, so a puzzle block is a box, it's a plastic box, and it has holes with different shapes. You might have a triangle shape on the top of the hole, a circle shape, a square shape, a rectangle shape. How many people know what I'm talking about? Give me a yes. You might have a puzzle box, okay? And the box, at the top of the box, there are triangle shape, is a triangle hole, a square hole, a rectangle hole, a circular hole, okay? And what the child has to do, the child has to take the shapes and match it to the hole in order to put it in. But I am very sure, mothers and fathers, you have watched your child do this before and they keep getting it wrong again and again and again and again and again. And what what is the desire that, that, that burns inside of you? You desire to show them, darling, this is the right block. You want to show the solution to them. <laughs> so the, the idea is, if you cannot hold back that desire, then that means you're probably a problem solver kind of leader. Yeah, but the, 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 the thing is, if you overuse it, eventually they don't learn. They just, and you are the only one end up playing with it. Uh, the baby will go, go walk off and do something else. So this is the same for children as it is for, for adults. Uh, especially when, when we are in a supervisory relationship with them. Okay, so, so far so good. What questions do you have? Please ask me now. Or if you have no questions, give me an N in the chat. Now, Malina has asked, should we have one prominent style? Position, you must be flexible. You must be adaptable. In this case, we call it versatility. You must be versatile enough to adapt to the situation of your, <laughs> your employee. Okay, good. So what happens when we overuse the style? It has been documented that when we overuse directing style, it becomes what is called dominating. Okay, people don't like this, but it happens. When we overuse delegating style, it becomes what we call abdicating. 
So what is abdicating? Usually the word abdicate means to, uh, you know, step down from a throne. A king or queen steps down from their throne to give the throne to somebody else. So abdicating here means running away from responsibility. So if you overuse the delegating style too much and you go, I don't know, I don't know, I give the job to him. Yeah, he did it or not, not my fault. I pass it to him already. So the, they, they, they can, you can actually be a kind of leader that throws other people under the bus instead of defending them, instead of finding out, you say, no, no, no. They what? Because I, uh, and I've met quite a few people like that. I have met uh, uh, quite a few people like that. It is scary. It is scary to the extent to which they will deny responsibility. And then we also have, when you overuse developing, you become what we call a carpet. <laughs> People walk all over you because all you do is, eh, tak per, tak per, no problem. Okay, try again. Okay, no worries. Come on, come on. Let's try again a little bit. Okay. So, you, we call this allowing. Or in some cases, uh, uh, I think, over, uh, overcompensating. And last one, when you problem solve too much, we call this over-involving. Okay, over-involving means that you are in their, in their work too much that they, they no longer need to do the work. You're doing it for them. I've met a few bosses like this. Uh, these bosses want to be liked. So when they give work and the, the staff says, Oh, boss, tak reti lah buat kerja ni. Macam mana ni? Uh, boss, buat kan boleh tak? Oh, iya ke? Tak apalah, tak apalah. Saya buat lah ini. And it starts a cycle. It creates an expectation that, Oh, tak apa, nanti boss buat. Tak apa, nanti boss buat. I forget to put the references page, tak apa, nanti boss buat. Okay, I forget to put, uh, uh, you know, a table of table of contents, tak apa, nanti boss buat. So, that's what happens when you overuse it. All right. So, if this is the case, we're using the styles separately, how do we use them together? Well, this is what we call the empowerment cycle. And the empowerment cycle uh, is a sequence of style use that gets the best results from your employees okay so what do we when we have when we give a new task to our employees if i were to say okay now guys we are going to start from one style and then we will move to another and then move to another and move to another this is what we call the empowerment cycle so if i were to say what is the first style you should use when you give your employee work to do what is the first style you should use when you give your employee work to do? Tell me in the chat, which one should that be? Okay, we've got two answers from Linda and Aisha so far. What about everyone else? What's your opinion? What, what would you say is the first style that's required when giving your people new a new task to do something they have done before where do you start okay Boon says delegating Susanna says directing okay so the majority says they start from directing and this makes sense why because we said that if it's a new task they've never done it before what do we need to do? We need to give them the what, the why, the how, the when. Yeah, we need to spell out clearly what is the KPIs, what is the the the, the target, and if there's a sample, if there's an example, if the, there's, the work has been done before, what should it look like? We actually give them a, a, a you know a description of what is to be expected. So if we start from directing, where do we go to next? What do we do next? Tell me in the chat. Which style do we go to next? Aisha says delegate, okay. Anyone else? Again, there's no right or wrong answers here. I want to know your opinion. Okay, Boon says delegating. Felinda says developing. Marina says delegating. Keep going, keep going. Okay, overwhelming majority right now says delegating. And, and according to the empowerment cycle, you're right. When you give the task, you delegate to them and you leave them be. 
let them start the task on their own let them make their own mistakes until such time when they find it difficult to move on so when you give them the direct when you're directing them in the beginning you tell them that okay if you have any problems come back to me okay if any problems come back to me but before you come back to me i want you to attempt to solve the problem on your own i want you to attempt to solve the problem on your own so now after delegating where should we go let's just say that they do the, the work but they get stuck they cannot proceed where do we go next Aisha says problem solving, okay. Problem solving, okay, so we, we bounce the problem solving so far. Three people say problem solving. Anyone else? Five. Four, three, two, one. Okay. So in the case of the empowerment cycle, the recommendation is actually not problem solving. Although there is a justification for that. I'll share that a little bit later. The, just, the, the rationale actually goes to developing. Why? Because if we jump directly to problem solving and we do it too often, that's what creates the, the, the scenario of the dependent employee. So if you have time, if you have time, and if you have the capacity to do so, the recommendation is to go to developing. Because if we can help them to work through these mistakes, work through these problems, one time, they will never make the same mistakes again. They will never make the same, make the same mistakes again. So you delegate to them, they try, and they get stuck. Instead of going to problem solving directly, the recommendation is to go down to developing. Now, why is it that uh, not many bosses want to do this? Number one biggest issue, time. They feel that it's a waste of time. Why, why I must sit down and I must, I must develop this guy, I must coach this guy some more. Leche lah. Might as well just give the answer, settle. Okay, that's one. That's one solution, which is you go to problem solving. The other possible solution is you go back to directing. Now, this is what a lot of bosses do. Okay. Okay. Here's the job, eh? go and do it like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay, get it done. Eh? Okay, delegate. And then employee comes back to boss. Boss, I don't know how to do this, boss. So what does a boss do? Directing, delegating, directing balik. Hiya. When the simple, macam ni, okay, sit down. Let me show you again how to do this. Macam ni, macam ni, macam ni, macam ni, macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. Faham? Okay, go and do. Now, question. Does that solve the problem? Yes or no? Does that solve a problem? Yes or no? Directing, delegating, directing. Yes. Malina, you said no. Tell me why. Tell me why no. From your experience as a, as a leader, from your experience as a subordinate, why do you say no? Because I'm sure some of your bosses have done this before. Directing, delegating, directing balik. Marina, are you there? Uh, uh, so yes, we can hear you. Uh, oh, okay. We can actually hear you. Uh, so Sorry. 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 If you if you if you tell hello. Yep. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if you tell the same thing, uh, they may, uh, they may, they may do the same thing as well. Uh, they may not get. Uh, what? Uh, what do you expect from them? Mm -hmm. So they won't. Uh, I just get. Okay. Uh, sorry again. Uh, the question was. Uh, the question is, uh, why doesn't it work to go from directing to delegating to directing balik? So they will make the same mistakes. So it won't solve the problem. <laughs> yes. Why will they make the same mistakes? Because they keep getting the same instructions. Yes. They got everything they needed in terms of guidance, but they did not get uh, emotional support. 
So when they are stuck, the same, uh, the same information. Balik balik benda so, sama. Nothing like changes. Same, nothing changes. Yeah. Imagine, imagine. You lose. <laughs> Has anybody done this before? You lose your car in spot again and again and again and again. Tak ada mahu pergi cari tempat lain jatuh, dek, letak dalam fridge ke, letak dalam cupboard ke mana. No, you, I, I think it was in the bedroom. And you just keep searching the bedroom again and again and you still cannot find it. Because why? Uh, you are not able to branch out. And this is exactly what happens to some bosses. They believe by reiterating, by re-explaining the task that you can do better. But here's the problem. The, the 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 challenge is not from a direction point of view the challenge is from a support point of view at this point why they cannot solve the problem is because they don't have the confidence or the commitment they're trying to solve the problem but they're afraid they'll make mistakes so they come back to you the actual answer that that's provided by the empowerment cycle is you must now invest your time this is the word invest or as I like to say, you need to take the leap from the top to the bottom. Okay, going from direct delegating from top to bottom, take the leap into developing and spend time to coach them, spend time to ask them questions to help them to work out the problem. Because when they were doing it alone, it didn't it didn't work. Now try it with you. So the sequence is directing, delegating, and developing. So when do we go to problem solving? Well, we go to problem solving um, only when the task that you've given them is already due and you don't have time to develop them. You say, okay, I'm, I've been developing you. It doesn't seem to work as fast uh, and we're running out of time. So tell you what, we move into problem solving. Okay, let's, let me do it and you watch, you learn from there. So problem solving here, we have that discussion. But you decide as a boss, you are the one decide if you need to, to complete uh, the task is a, a report or something like that. The idea is the work is now taken away from them, but they are still providing input into the work. So this is what we call the empowerment cycle. Now, when can we jump straight to problem solving from directing to problem solving or directing delegating to problem solving? That can be done only in times of crisis. Okay, when you really have not enough time to develop, but I wouldn't recommend you do it all the time. Use it sparingly because when you use it all the time, directing. Okay, uh, staff goes, eh, kerja ni leceh lah bos, tak kerti lah. Oh, tak apa, saya buat. Directing goes straight to problem solving. It creates a dependent culture. Okay, or directing, delegating, problem solving. Still creates a, 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 a dependent culture. So the only way to break that cycle is to move to developing. And many bosses don't like it. I'm telling you, uh, I've taught this many, many times. Many bosses argue with me because they say, I don't have the time. But that is your job. Your job is to be able to develop them at least once within that task so they don't make that mistake again. And they are more confident, they are more committed the next time round, especially if it's the same task. But he Every time you give a new task, something that they've never done before, you have to go through the cycle again and again and again and again. But if it's an old task, some, not an old task, but it's something that's routine, something they're used to, then you go directing, delegating. That's it. You stop right there. Yeah, with the caveat, <laughs> with the understanding that they know how to do the task. Okay. I'm going to pause right now and ask, what questions do you have? Please ask me now. If you have no questions, give me an N in the chat. If you have questions, please ask me now. If you have no questions, give me an N in the chat. So let's see, 14 Ns or, you know, 12 Ns and two questions. I'm sorry, I got disconnected there. Can somebody tell me what was the last thing they heard from me? I think Dr. Tan has a question. 
Oh, okay. So what is the question? When, when I got disconnected, I didn't see the chat as, uh, uh, at all as well. So was there a question? I, I actually have a question. Yes, please. Um, so what about um, if your boss is that type of, uh, you know, the directing and then straight away jump into the problem solving and uh, as a staff, um, um, actually how, how sh uh, what, what should we do actually? <laughs> like, you know, okay. uh, every time the, the boss is uh, directing and then straight away uh, settle it and then as a staff, like we, we can't learn anything and then probably we also very afraid to make a mistake and those. Okay. So if you're, this is no longer a course on leadership, then it's a course on followership. So I can answer your question, but it's going to be outside of the, the, <coughs> the confines of this course. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. So the first thing you need to understand is if you're going to speak to authority, you must first have the courage to speak to authority. You must have your benefits and your uh, uh, losses standing by as information. Because what you're trying to do now is you're trying to persuade your boss to change his or her behavior. Am I correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So if you want to change someone's behavior and they are in higher authority than you, so you need to bring a lot of justification, a lot of evidence, which means you cannot just go in and chuck up to saja. You need to do your observation, collect your, your, your rationale, and then present it to your boss and say, boss, um, I have something I want to, to bring to your attention. Would you like to, to see uh, or understand how your interaction with us impacts our performance and how we can make it better? And if the boss says, yes, okay, go ahead. Then you share your information and you, you share your, your, your opinion that, you know, when you do this with us, it doesn't allow us to make mistakes. We are scared of making mistakes because uh, it's, it's very highly regulated. And the boss might say, well, yes, I mean, in, in the work, that we do it is highly regulated we cannot make mistakes yeah so if i were to take your situation right now mr boon and i were to port it out to some high regulated industries like oil and gas uh manufacturing medicine uh what else is there uh, finance these are very very strict industries where the bosses tend to be directing problem solving, directing problem solving. They, 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 they don't want to delegate and develop as much because they are also afraid of mistakes. So in this case, you need to sharpen your persuasion skills, your influence skills, bring along as much uh, validated evidence as possible, present, and then there's nothing you can do. <laughs> then they will have to decide how they, whether they want to change that behavior or not. Why? because you are not in a position of authority over them. But the best you can do is persuade and influence. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Thanks. So, so if that's scary, I understand, because you're, going, you're managing upwards. Uh, so tell them, tell, them, tell them exactly what you told me, but with evidence. And if they see that there's... And also, you want to appeal to their social style, right? If they are driving, okay, then appeal to their results mind. Okay, you say this is what happens, and because you're doing this, this is the results that we're getting. Okay, but if you do this, if you if you start doing this diff this way, then these are the better results that you will get. But don't lie. Actually, do your do your your numbers calculation properly, uh, so that you have something to present. So I hope that answers the question, uh, because that your what you're talking about is less about leadership and more about communication or persuasion skills. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, managing upwards is not fun, uh, especially in Asia, because there's an expectation that you must respect me because I eat salt more before you. Um, well, that mentality needs to start going away because as we move further and further into the future, um, these kinds of bosses might find it very difficult to lead their team because even the team gets younger and younger, and looks forward to a different kind of a different way of leadership. Thank you. Any other questions? What questions do you have for me? So let's do it the other way around. So I get full confirmation from you. If you have no questions for me, give me an N in the chat.
Okay, two n so far, uh, but we have 14 people in the room. So where's the other 12? <laughs> so we got three, four, five, six, So we got six, which is still under 50% of 14. Since there's silence, I should assume that there are no questions and I shall move on. All right. So the second concept I want to introduce to you, which is related to, to uh, leadership styles, is the concept of skill and will. Okay. Now, skill refers to the ability of your employee to do something. And if we look at these four bullet points, these are exactly what they refer to. Number one, technical skills. What falls under the category of technical skills? It is the ability to do something to perfection, meeting KPIs. So Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft Word, calculations, um, uh, what's the word? Brainstorming. These are all technical skills, things that they learned to be able to process information. Number two, interpersonal skills so this is different from technical in that technical is about well, working with systems working with outside systems interpersonal skills is about working with internal systems between human beings the third one is job knowledge how much do they know about their job and the last one is organizational knowledge how much do they know about the general organization Okay, so Aisha has a question. Is age affect leadership style? Um, wow, I don't have any data. I don't have any research to, to, to back that up. So I will have to say I don't know. You have managed to reach the edge of my knowledge, which means I, I, I don't have an answer to that question. I apologize for that. Um, but it is an interesting thing. I will, I will ask my teachers. I'll go, go back and ask my professors. And uh, let's see if, if we can come up with an answer. Um, if you can't find an answer from me, then look to your uh, management faculty. Okay, I'm sure you have one management faculty uh, and ask them because uh, we study about the same things uh, uh, anyway. So, so far, I have not had it, read any research where the age affects the leadership style. Uh, I don't know that, that anyone's done that yet. But thank you very much. I apologize, Aisha. <laughs> uh, I won't be able to answer that question. Sorry. <laughs> But it's, it, now, now you got me thinking. Hmm. This is the first time in as many years people, somebody has asked me that question. Okay, you blurred me out. <laughs> okay, now we talk about will. So what's the difference between skill and will? Well, skill, if we say, is the ability to do something. Will is the commitment and the confidence. Basically, I want to do. Ah, so it refers to the interest. Interest meaning I actually... Uh, you know, am interested in this is something I like. Confidence is I'm very sure I can do this. Willingness is that commitment. I am okay. Give me boss. I will do. No problem. And the last one is organizational alignment. Organizational alignment means how aligned, how in line are they with the organization's values and culture. Okay. So you can have someone who is very highly skilled but very lowly willed what does that look like it's it's an employee who's very smart but very lazy or you might also have someone who's highly willed but lowly skilled sangat sangat excited semangat sangat tinggi boss ada kerja tak ini boss boss nak bagi kerja apa ini boss boss bagilah saya kerja saya buat boss tetapi setiap kali buat kerja semua salah so what is the ideal you're looking for? You're looking for someone who is highly skilled within a particular field and highly willed. Yeah, thank God if you get someone like that. Unfortunately, because of the variety of work that we do, it's impossible to find someone who is 100% in all. Why? Because we face different problems every day. Uh, and sometimes our employees, even our senior employees, are not able to solve the problem because it's not their bidang. It is not their field. <laughs> Malina, uh, are you laughing at the, the fact that you can get uh, different flavors of people? Highly skilled, lowly willed, or highly willed, lowly skilled? The worst one is low skill, low will. Buang terus lah. Tak payah simpan lah. Or you send for training. 
the best one of course is highly skilled highly willed and you make sure that they stay they don't move to another company okay so let's talk a little bit about a few things here i want to uh, i want to share with you um <laughs> i want to share with you organizational alignment because this is one thing that, that i want to to clarify it organizational knowledge is what you know about the organization the sops the procedures the processes but organizational alignment is about the culture of the organization it is not written anywhere now um, i'm going to choose some controversial examples but i believe we're all adults we should be able to discuss controversial things when i was working at accenture is an international company um, whenever we run training programs the training programs would run monday to friday right so it is a long training program and participants would fly in from many different countries now the, the course ends on friday which means thursday night is the last day for them to enjoy for them to to celebrate so as part of the training program um, we include a dinner so we take the participants out to dinner to a restaurant uh, and they have dinner and there's drinks so the drinks are also involved in set, in some cases they have free flow free flow of alcohol and the idea that oh this organization uh, allows for alcohol consumption uh, they will actually pay for it it's part of the part of the, the the package but nowhere in the company's policies does it mention anything about alcohol nowhere nowhere that says that we must uh, as part of the training program we must provide alcohol for the participants nowhere at all so if you look at the, uh, the the company's sops the policies you will not find it my question now is what if you went to say a patronas dinner a patronas employee dinner tell me honestly in the chat would you expect to see alcohol being served there yes or no would you expect to see alcohol being served there yes or no Okay, you won't expect, but interestingly, if you look into the policies, you look into the SOPs, you will not find anything that prohibits, um, you know, uh, their events having alcohol. It's not mentioned anywhere. But why is it? Why is it that everyone here automatically says no? Why would you say automatically say no? You know the answer. You're just not telling me. <laughs> Every organization has its own culture. That culture is not written down. University of Malaya has its own culture. I bet you, I know for sure that you have a culture that's not written down anywhere. If I come there, there are things that I'm not used to. But you have to tell me, eh, dekat sini, kita buat macam ni tau. Even every organ, even every department, every faculty within UM will have a different culture. Heck, look at this like this. How many WhatsApp groups are you part of? 80? 120 confirm for me yes or no every whatsapp group you're part of has a different culture yes or no every whatsapp group you're part of has a different culture this whatsapp group you berani buat lawak this whatsapp group tak boleh ada ustaz <laughs> this whatsapp group you, you can you can make all sorts of jokes this whatsapp group only good morning graphics every day good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning so every group has their own culture, which means that every time there's a gathering of people, you whatever you want to write down, you know, the house rules or ground rules or like that, but there will always be something that's unwritten. Yeah, good morning, assalamualaikum. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now you understand what organizational alignment means. It does not refer to the ter surat, it refers to the ter sirat. Okay, which means that your employee, uh, if they have high skill, Okay, they got all four, but they cannot fit in with the culture. That's going to be a problem as well. Okay, so now let's talk about measurement. Let's talk about measurement. How do we measure their skill level? Well, um, the proposition here is we say you can do one, two, and three. But if you decide to do five or seven, that's also okay. We start with, with one, two, three. We say that a person can be of low skill level or medium skill level or high skill level. We can say they'll be low will, medium will or high will. Now, I want you to, to remember something, right? 
this refers to the task you're giving them this refers to the task you're giving them so i'll give you an example if your employee is an engineer and you give them an engineering task what is the probability of their skill level one two or three tell me in the chat what is the probability of their skill level one two or three Felinda says possibly three why is an engineer and i'm giving her uh, uh, an engineering task fine okay what if your employee is an engineer and you give them an architecture task what is the probable skill level do you think Oh, so aku dah gila agaknya. <laughs> what is about okay, one or two, right? So, even if it's a senior engineer, suddenly you give a, a, a medical task, something medicine related, you can, <laughs> you, their skill level going to drop to one or zero. So, remember that this measure of skill and will refers to the task that you're giving them, not their overall skill level. It refers to how they interact with the task. And this is what we call the situation. So, the situation of the employee is either they they match the task you delegate the correct task to them based on their their correct skill set and will set yeah or you accidentally give the the wrong wrong uh, packaging to the wrong employee someone who has a lower skill set or lower will set within that so maybe they have a high skill uh, in a in a task you want to give them but they're scared to attempt because it, it you know it could cost them their reputation it could it could you know there's mistakes that that could possibly be be very very costly so their will might be low so these are the situations we are talking about okay if everyone understood what i just shared with you please give me a yes in the chat if everyone understood please give me a yes in the chat Thank you. Since everybody answers yes, I'm going to give you a test. <laughs> we are going to give you four scenarios and we want you to work through these scenarios as I show you. Okay, so situation number one, Karen, a highly motivated, experienced team member, will be leading two key areas of a project. She has experience in the industry. She is familiar with the client and she has used a similar approach in previous roles. So first question, I want everyone to answer in the chat. Based on the information in the scenario, what do you believe is her skill level? One, two, or three. What do you believe is her will level? One, two, or three. And how you answer is, you answer with S1, W1, like that. I want the S and the number, and then W and the number. So take a look at this, analyze this, and tell me what do you think is her skill and will level. <clears throat> okay, Felinda believes Karen is S3W3. Malina says S3W3 as well. S2W3. Okay, S2W3. So, um, Safia says S2. What is, uh, okay, that's also fair. But nobody is saying S1. So when you look at the, the, the situation, it says that she is highly motivated. That should give you a clue though, for W3. And experienced team member. She has experience in the industry, is familiar with the client, and has used a similar approach to previous rules. That should also indicate a very high level of skill. So S2 or S if you were Karen's boss and you wanted to give this task to Karen, okay, I'll repeat it. If you were Karen's boss and you wanted to give this task to Karen, how far would you go in the empowerment cycle? Would you just direct or direct and delegate or direct delegate, uh, uh, delegate disappear, direct delegate develop or direct dele delegate develop and problem solve? Tell me how far you would go. Tell me in the chat. How far would you go on the empowerment cycle? Put yourself in Karen's situation. What was she like? Marina says problem solving. Aisha says direct and delegate. Okay. Anyone else? 
Don't worry about giving me a correct answer. Just do your best. Okay, Boon says direct and delegate. Mm, direct and delegate. All right, looks like uh, quite a few people decide direct delegate. Now, I want you, I want to ask you this question. Is Karen very competent at her job? Is Karen very competent at her job? What do you think? Yes or no? Yes. So if Karen is very competent at her job, imagine if you come up to her as her boss and you keep pestering her. Hey, everything okay? Ah? Everything okay? Ah? Hey, are you doing okay? Hey, any problems? Ah? How what can I help? <laughs> what happens is you will I apologize for the word, but I'm going to use it. You will piss her off. She'll be like, please leave me alone. Let me do my work. Yeah, I know what I need to do. I know. Please, please, please just leave me alone. Now, um, somebody tell me in, honestly in the chat, I, because I'll ask this question only once. How many people have had that happen to them? You know the job. You've done it before. You're very confident. And yet your boss keeps pestering you. Siapa pernah kena? Type in me. So just to be fair, I will type in first. Because I pernah kena. It makes me feel I cannot be trusted. <laughs> it makes me feel like, you know, I'm actually on the roll. And then you come and you stop me lagi. So my my, mo my momentum gets, gets uh, uh, you know, gets crushed. All right. Only one person. Felinda, can you share a bit of a story um, of what you experienced? Um, I think uh, they, they, they sama macam the feeling is the same like when you are going to do the dishes but then your mom keeps saying that huh? are dishes? you going to oh. no, it's just <laughs> a, an example first it's I know, I know, I know uh, it's the same feeling of you know I am going to do the dishes but then your mom keeps asking yeah. you are you going to do the dishes and you're and you start to getting annoyed by it because and you start to feeling i don't want to do it now i don't want to do it <laughs> something like that so when it comes to work um uh, i i know because it's the same task that i need to do but then when people um keep checking on me um if uh if it's okay uh, if i'm doing okay then i get quite annoyed by it because um it's not something new if, if, if it is something new that i understand if you need to check up on me but then if it's something that i have done it for years so it, it can be quite um <laughs> annoyed i agree i agree <laughs> so if you also so if you see the correlation when somebody is s3w3 when somebody is S3W3, all you have to do is just direct and let go. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The most you can do is maybe direct and delegate. Yeah. So they know what they need to do. You pass the task to them, that's it. All right. Let's go to situation number two. Adam or Adam is new to your company. He is personable and seems bright, but is basically starting from scratch. He is working on a project in an area that is new for him. He was pleased to be given the assignment, but is clearly having trouble getting started. So tell me his skill and will level in the chat, please. As what? W what? Give me your assessment. <laughs> Malina has gone all the way. S1, W1. Okay, Boon and Valinda are a bit more, uh, uh, what's the word, charitable, S1, W2. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay, Aisha goes S1, W3. Wow, okay. Okay, S1, W2. All right. So, it's not that Adam is not smart. He is smart, but the problem is this is a new task for him. It's a new company. Maybe in the previous company, he did very, very well. But this time around, he's doing some new work. Yeah. Remember, guys, when you started a new job, my God, 
you were in your previous job you were superhero when you start a new job like alamak <laughs> betate you have to start all over again so that's what's happening to adam right now yeah it says here <laughs> what <laughs> malina bagilah tak apalah bagilah w1s pun dia tak bagi tu <laughs> one to two <laughs> so if you look here it says he is personable and seems bright but it's basically starting from scratch that indicates a very low uh, skill he's working on a project in an area is new for him ah lagilah he was pleased to be given the assignment but is clearly having trouble getting started so even if you are uh, generous you cannot go beyond w2 yeah, you can't go beyond w2 if you're even generous w3 memang confirm tak boleh w1 sangat sangat possible w2 is already very charitable so if adam requires um, a lot of um, uh, what's the word if you say his skill is low so what do we need to give him if you say his uh, his will is low what do we need to give him so my question to everyone is how far would you go to in the in the empowerment cycle to help adam how far would you go direct only direct delegate direct delegate develop or direct delegate develop problem solving how far would you go bun says until problem solving <laughs> why this guy got i cannot <laughs> i cannot trust one lah. must must go all the way there <laughs> okay aisha says we go to as far as three felinda says i'll go to develop but stand by in case problem solving okay good anyone else Okay, now you look at the clue. Skill is related to high directive. Will is related to high support. So when somebody is S1, the clue is already there. It's either direct or problem solve. If somebody is W1, the clue is already there. It's either develop or problem solve. So if you put both of them together, then what is most probable is that you give them both direction and high support okay does this make sense to everyone yes or no it's taking a very complex topic like leadership and distilling it down into a model a framework a theory that you can actually use something that you can stick on your wall and you go oh no wonder my people does not respond to me okay so if everyone understood this so far give me a yes in the chat please okay so far so good all right let's go to situation uh, direct delegate develop reassess ready for develop and problem solving yes okay let's go to situation three kevin kelvin sorry kelvin Kelvin has been working on your team for two months. You are very pleased with the high level of his skills and his unmitigated confidence and enthusiasm. Ah, unmitigated confidence to apa? <laughs> uh, keyakinan yang melampau-lampau. <laughs> Unfortunately, his extensive use of sarcasm in meetings recently has dampened the client's confidence. Now, I want you to think very carefully. What is Kelvin's skill level and will level in this situation with this task? Okay, I'm going to pause for a second. Can everybody hear me? Please give me a yes or no. Can everybody hear me? Please give me a yes or no. Yes. Okay. Malina, can you hear me now? Hello, Malina, can you hear me now? Okay, thank you everyone for the feedback. It looks like uh, only Malina is not, uh, not not able to hear me. So maybe, maybe something with the audio on your side. All right. So I'll, uh, let me let me start again. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. Hang on a sec. Okay. So I'm going to continue. So if you look at at, at uh, Kelvin's scenario here. 
this is a bit of a trick question. I'm going to say it right now. It's a bit of a trick question, right? In this situation, we talk about situation leadership. In Kelvin's situation, what would you say is his skill level and his will level? Tell me in the chat. What would you say is his skill level and his will level? Okay, Kelvin S three W three for the social skill one. Tawale, you must you must rate him for this situation. You must rate him for this situation. Okay, Ching says S three W one. Un says S two W one. Okay, cantik lah. Okay. <laughs> okay, S two W two. Okay, I'm gonna ask Ching. You rated S three for Kelvin, and you rated W one. Okay. My question is, oh, sorry. What are you referring to, Ching? What are you referring to? Which of these four bullet points on the skill did you give him a three for? Please share with me. Perhaps the technical skill. Okay. So you gave him technical skills. That means he does his work very, very well. Good. Now, you gave him a W1. Under will, there are four bullet points. Which one did you give W one for? Mm, be the organization alignment. Perfect. Five stars for you. Uh, this is something that's very difficult. Not many people understand it. So I want you to explain to us why did you say organization alignment? Because he treated the clients in such a way that make the deal, he lose the deal is because of that, right? Right. So when we talk about the use of sarcasm, um, it refers here to the organization's culture, the client's organization's culture, which he did not match very well. And, and sometimes sarcasm is useful to build uh, rapport, build relationship with clients because sometimes the clients can also be sarcastic. But in this case, what happened was Kelvin did not read the room well. Yeah, we use the term read the room, especially in training or in education. We cannot, he did not read the, 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 the vibe or the energy of the room to better understand what the situation was. And he just used sarcasm in all of his meetings, uh, thinking that it made him sound smart. But the fact is, it actually made, made it worse for the client. Uh, and they complained to his boss and his boss has to do something now. So thank you very much for that. You're right. Uh, the reason we give him W1 is we are measuring his organizational alignment. That's where the, the, the uh, what if we, if we look, his unmitigated confidence, wouldn't that be W3? Yes, but in this situation, it is not that we're measuring. We're measuring that number four, organizational alignment. So I hope you understand. Thank you very much. Now for the second question, <laughs> with Kelvin, how far will you go in the empowerment cycle? Tell me in the chat. Directing, directing, delegating, directing, delegating, developing, or directing, de 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 delegating, developing, problem solving. How far will you go? Melinda says problem solving. Okay. Anyone else? How far will you go? Okay, another 14, another 13 people thinking about it. Aisha says developing, okay. All right. So if you look at the clue, let's look at the clue again. S3 means he does not need high directive. So that rules out what? That rules out directing and that rules out problem solving. The problem here we're facing is the W. So if W1, W is one, that means he needs high support. If he needs high support, then only one quadrant is left. And that quadrant is, let's see, we got that right. 
that quadrant, okay, this is a typo. <laughs> that quadrant is actually developing. So it's not delegating, it's actually developing where we, we need to sit down with him and coach him to change his behavior. Okay, let me just fix that right now. <laughs> that should be all the way here. Okay, that's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'll fix it later when I send you the slides. <laughs> Okay, so they, they should go all the way to problem solving, eh, sorry, all the way to developing, because why? We say S3. S3 means he no longer needs high directive, which rules out directing and uh, problem solving. But W1 means that he needs high support because his will, will level is low. So if high support means that that rules out delegating, that also rules out problem solving. So what's only left is developing, okay? Does everyone understand this? Give me a yes. If you have questions, please ask me now. Okay, there's only two options. Because if I don't hear from you, then I'll have to move on. Because this is the only way we get to interact with each other over Zoom. So I'll ask it again. If everyone understands, give me a yes. If you have questions, please ask me now. Okay, we've got two yeses. Any questions? All right. So let's move on to situation four, the last situation. Sarah or Sarah. Sarah was assigned to you after a rocky experience in another role. She is talented and confident, but she resists learning the job requirements hmm, and wants to work with clients entirely in her own what? Entirely in her own way. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine. So, what is her skill level? What is her will level? What do you think? What is her skill level? What is her will level? If you need uh, a guide, let's go back here. So, what is her skill level and her will level? So, maybe you need to take a photo of this. Yeah, or write down some of these. Let's go back. Oops, sorry. Let's go back to situation four. So what do you think is her skill and will level? Tell me in the chat. Yes, situation four is by far the most difficult one to work with. Have fun with that. Okay, S2, W1. S3, W1. S3, W1. She is talented and confident. Okay. All right. So there, there seems to be some consensus S three W one uh, S two or S three W one. All right. Now, situation four is one that is heavily debated. There is no right answer to it, and the problem is, of course. We don't have enough details. We don't know why she, she, she resists learning the, the job requirements. We don't know why, what was the rocky experience she had. So in this case, without enough information, it's going to be a bit of a, a pitch in the dark. Lah. Okay. So when you do this with your people, you will come to a situation where you go, hmm, what do I rate them as? Okay, you have to think about the situation and understand why something happened. In this case, Sarah could have been, you know, uh, had a rocky experience with because the client was the problem, not her. Or maybe it was uh, uh, processing. The processes could have been the problem, not her. We don't automatically assume it was her fault. Uh, in terms of learning the, uh, resist learning the job requirements. So that tells us that she does not have job knowledge. She does not have job knowledge, even though she has organizational knowledge. She doesn't know how the job needs to be done. She insists in working in her own way. 
which is not acceptable, especially since uh, we have a standard process, for example. Okay, so based on your answers, how far do you think you need to go in the empowerment cycle? Directing, directing, delegating, directing, delegating, developing, or directing, delegating, developing, problem solving. What do you think? How far do you need to go? Belinda says developing. Okay, Ching says developing. Right, three people have chosen developing. Thank you, Malina. Okay, so the answer, depending on what, how you assess her, can be anywhere from um, all the way to developing or standing by to problem solving. Because it looks like even her skill level is low. So if you, if you assume that her skill level is low, which means that she not only resists, that means resists learning the job requirements, it means that she doesn't have the job knowledge. So in that case, then we have to go all the way to problem solving, right? So Aisha, Aisha says problem solving. She's a bit problematic, but we don't know why she's problematic. And this is where we need to be to be a, a, a thread very, very lightly, okay? So that takes care of this particular topic. And we're going to give you a 15-minute break before we come back to complete the last topic of the day. My question is, I would like you to tell me in the chat, what have you, what out of this morning, from this morning up until right now, at this moment at 3.34, I think there's a 3.34 in the afternoon, what was your favorite learning, your favorite takeaway for this whole day so far? I'm going to give you one minute to tell me in the chat. Here we go. What was your favorite takeaway, your favorite learning from this session so far? Let's see what pops up in the chat. Malina well, says three and one. What does that mean? What does that refer to? Oh, you, you can hear me now. <laughs> okay. What do you mean by three and one? Module. Oh, okay. Three and one. So three is right now. Uh, one is uh, people drive. Okay. No, no worries. No worries. <laughs> okay. Let's hear from everyone else. I'll give you another 30 seconds. Out of the whole day from this morning up until now, what was your favorite takeaway, favorite learning from the session? Aisha says, my favorite topic, social style. I like all the tests. Able to test my notes throughout the course. Okay, thank you. Uh, Boon also likes social style. So if you're interested in social style, you can actually get yourself uh, certified in it. Um, of course, it's, it's a bit pricey, but it's worth it. If you want to look for it online, you just Google for social style, and then you add on this word, Tracom Group. Because social style is administered by two, two different companies, uh, Tracom and Wilson Learning. But Wilson Learning has not had good uh, uh, developments in their in their data gathering for quite a few years. So uh, Tracom has has you know has been the preferred has been the preferred provider for for years. And of course, I'm a bit biased because I was certified by them. Okay, anyone else? Cool. 
Thank you very much. It is 3.37 where I am. I'm going to give you a 15-minute break. We shall come back at 3.50. If you're good to go, give me a ready in the chat. All right. See you in a bit. Bye-bye, everyone. It is 3.50, sunny and bright where I am. Thank goodness. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, uh, you know, uh, cloudy on the outside. It's not very hot. So let's see who is back and ready to go. Give me a ready in the chat. Who is back and ready to go? All right. Thank you very much. Who else? Thank you, Moon. Thank you, Felinda. Thank you, Shiba. All right. So it looks like we. Uh, some people just came back. Okay, um, I want to finish this before five, so I'm going to go straight ahead into the last topic, which is coaching for growth. And the first question I have for you is, we have heard this word being bandied around left and right, top and bottom. I'm sure people have, have used this with you before. My question is, what is coaching to you? Tell me in the chat. I'm not looking for a Webster def definition. What is coaching mean to you? Okay, so tell me in the chat. What do you think it is? Some of you might have experience. Some of you might have gone for training or a, a course in coaching, for example. Um, but for those who have only just heard it, what does coaching mean to you? All right, let's see what pops up in the chat. All right, so the Shiba says is a form of enhancement. Thank you. What else? Who else? Okay, Felina says, guide someone to do things with a good outcome. Thank you. Boon says, support a learner in, his, in achieving his or her goal. Yes. Anyone else? Five, four, three, two. Yes, Ching says, guide and improve your strength. Good. Let's, let's do the countdown again. Five, four. Three, two, one. Okay, well done. Thank you very much. So if you've ever heard of the word coaching, um, you must know that there is an official definition and there is the street definition. The street definition is what is used by people who, you know, they, they use the word coaching to mean things that are different from what coaching actually is. So let's go back to the original meaning, right? Coaching comes from the term that's used in football or American football, sports coaching. Okay, so what does a sports coach do? A sports coach basically motivates, um, gives uh, pep talks, um, actually plans their development of the, the sports teams, make sure that they do their training, uh, manages their, their schedule, things like that. So this is what a sports coach does. But in the business world, right, in, in, in the industry, the term coaching has also been adopted and used in a different way. So there's actually a governing body right now called the ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation, which uh, it's, it's the biggest body in the world. Not to say it's the only body, but it's the biggest body in the world. And a lot of people around the world have taken their coaching certifications there. Now, wait a minute. I thought we just said that the sports coaching, what is this different? So this is what they call either performance coaching, life coaching, or just, you know, just, just known as coaching per se. And the idea here is that it's used to help people develop their performance individually. A sports coach is someone who develops a whole team at one go. So if you use the word coaching, usually you are referring to developing only one person at a time. So you have coaching conversations. 
but you can also have group coaching where you guide a lot of people at the same time and the process is called facilitation now if we take a look at some definitions let's see if we can um, clarify what other definitions mean so that we know exactly what coaching is and is not so first definition is training what is training and how is it compared to coaching well training provides learning for developing specific skills so today i am in training mode i am teaching you new things that you did not know counseling is helping another with support and advice to facilitate awareness and behavior change so when you go to a counselor you all you often go to a counselor with a personal problem a family problem a career problem something that you need you need help with and a counselor of course in malaysia is protected or uh, protected and guided under the counselors act akta counseling okay so it is not it's a very big deal you need to actually have good credentials in order to be considered a counselor so there's a long term uh, education plan path for you to be able to get here and counselors also help with mental health issues in uh, whenever whenever we have we face them uh, we go to a counselor to help help figure out you know uh, ethical dilemmas um, things uh, god forbid suicide or even uh, family issues so that's what counseling is what about mentoring now mentoring is when we draw from past experience and past success to help someone else who similar to us meet a similar goal now here's an example if you want to open up a florist yeah a flower shop and you need a business mentor will you find a business mentor who sells cars or will you find a business mentor who also sells flowers it just makes sense that you find someone who sells flowers because why they can show you the ropes they can show you all the logistics you know what you need to get done because you run the same kind of business so mentoring is usually you go up to someone who's older wiser more experienced uh, longer in the industry and you say please teach me um, what mistake should i make what are some of the things that i should be aware of so mentors usually meet you like maybe once a week or once a month or sometimes uh, several months in a year in order to help you to get to where they got now we talk about coaching coaching is not the same as mentoring because mentoring is teaching you uh, from their experience coaching is not the same as counseling because counseling helps you gives you advice yeah gives you advice to actually overcome a problem and coaching is not training because i'm not giving you any new knowledge any new information coaching only enables your progress by asking asking you high impact questions and you work it out you actually solve your own problem so that you can achieve your desired goal now does everyone understand what i've explained so far give me a yes in the chat if you are confused ask me a question now okay so once again if you understood just explain to you give me a yes in the chat if you have questions please ask me now okay so far so good now this might not jive with some of your understanding of coaching because like i said there is a formal formal definition of coaching and there's also the street definition and the street definition tends to cover things like training counseling and mentoring as well yeah but if you want to go for for the the official definition then coaching is only asking questions okay to help you to work out your problems so when a coachy yeah a coachy is someone who works with a coach when a coachy comes to a coach with an issue with a performance problem or a life problem or a business problem different from a counselor or a mentor the coachy the, the coach does not actually give you new information what's all actually happening is that your brain is so messed up that you cannot get clarity to think you cannot think very clearly so the coach the coach's job is to ask specific questions to help you slowly untangle what's there in your brain so that you gain clarity 
please write this word down. The goal of coaching is to help the coachee gain clarity. Okay, that's the most important word. And you write that down, you, you will have gotten coaching, the full definition of coaching uh, in one word. We want to help our coaches gain clarity. Now, because you have said you understood, let's bust some myths, okay? I want you to tell me true or false, okay? True or false about these particular statements. So which of the following statements are true about coaching? Number one, coaching is about advising the coachee. True or false? Tell me in the chat. You can give me a T or an F. Coaching is about advising the coachee. Okay. So Aisha says true. Ching says false. Felinda says true. Azrul says true. Dr. Hami says true. Boon says false. Malina says true. Okay. So a couple of people have said false. Let's ask Ching. Ching, why do you say false? When I say coaching is about advising the coach, why do you say false? Because just now you said coaching is more like asking questions and uh -huh. to let them to gain clarities, right? It's not giving advice to the coach. Thank you very much. So the coach, the coach will not give new information to the coachy. The coachy has to work with the information that they currently have in their heads. And this is why we say coaching is not about providing advice. Who provides advice? Mentors and counsellors. Now, it's very crucial for us to understand why coaching is important and the process needs to be maintained. If you advise the coachy, what happens? You are in problem-solving mode. If we go back to the leadership styles, you are in problem-solving mode and you create a dependent employee, which means that when they come to you, they're not coming to you for clarity anymore. They're coming to you because they know you can solve their problem. And this can become a headache because if you have created a, a, a scenario, an atmosphere where, um, never mind, let me ask the boss. That means they will never grow. So where do we do coaching? In the leadership uh, styles model, it is in developing. Yeah, where do we do mentoring? It is in problem solving. So that's the first one. Thank you very much for that. Okay, second one. Coaching enables independent critical thinking among coaches. True or false? Coaching enables independent think critical thinking among coaches. True or false? All right. So it looks like overwhelmingly everyone says true. You are right. We want for them to think, not us to think. We are a guide that helps them to figure things out, but they are the ones that have to think. Okay, how about a third one? Coaching, uh, this is a bit of American language, I apologize. Coaching does not compartmentalize work from family and self. So pause for a second, don't answer just yet. What this means is that when the coachee comes to you and you are their boss and they want to talk about their family problems, yeah? That means that you must, you, you say that, okay, we'll talk about your family problems. If you say, no, you are at work, so my, I will only coach you related to work. So if we say true, coaching does not compartmentalize work from family and itself. If you say true, that means you as a coach will need to listen to even their family problems. If you say false, it means that coaching only talks about work. So which do you think it is, true or false? Okay, only two people have answered. Still thinking? Yeah, it is a bit of a complex question. <laughs> If you stay true, that means that the coachy comes to you with any problem, even if it's a family problem, you have to accept. If you say false, that means that you only focus on work issues. Well, technically, coaching is true. It does not compartmentalize. That means well, if they want to talk about family problems that affects their work, then you start there. You cannot say, no, no, 
No, no, talk only about work because it is the family problems sometimes that are causing the work issues. So you have the opportunity to be a sounding board. Now, at this point in time, some people will say, that's not part of my job scope, not part of my job description. <laughs> but if you are willing to be a coach, there's a lot of benefits in it. It helps you to think better because it makes you a better listener as well. Malina says, makes sense. What do you, what do you, what do you mean by that, Malina? Yes. So the problem with, with some coaches is that they, they limit the discussion, whereas you don't actually know what's happening inside their heads. They want to start with a family problem or they want to start with a health problem or they want to start with a motivation problem. Okay, That might not be the ending point. That might not be the actual issue. So wherever they start, you allow them to start and you listen. Okay, So Boon says, but we might not be the best candidate to coach them for their personal problem right here's the here's the thing about about that okay here's the thing about that but when we ask questions we are not giving advice so when we ask questions why are we asking questions not for us to find out it is for them to clarify for themselves again we are not helping them with advice we are only helping them to think therefore <laughs> therefore that leads us to the fourth question a coach is an expert in the same field as a coachee. True or false? What do you think? And that's, this relates back to, to Boone's question. So my question to you guys, a coach is an expert in the same field as the coachee. True or false? Azrael says true. Aisha says false. Ching says false. Dr. Elmi says true. Okay, we got true, false, false, false. All right. Let's pick one. <laughs> uh, Aisha, you said false. Why is that? Uh, yes, like you said, coach um, asked question, and basically, I think uh, in terms of uh, generic skills, or yeah, because it it involves, uh, for example, personal matter and also work. Mm -hmm. So it's quite general, not really in the same field as the coaching. All right. Thank yeah. you. So there's a bit of a caveat to this answer. Yeah? A coach, if the coach is an expert in the same field as a coachee, that's okay. That's good because then you save time. You will not be asking too many questions uh, about you know, the technicalities of the problem because you understand the technicalities of the problem. So in that case, okay, the coaching session can become faster, but there is a downside to it. If we are an expert in the same field, we might be tempted to give a solution. And I'm telling you, I've, I've gone through this so many times, I have to bite my tongue so that I don't accidentally give a solution. Why? Because once I give a solution, they become dependent on that solution. They become dependent on that advice. So here, at this point in time, I'm going to ask you this question, right? Um, when people give us advice, do an audit for me. Do an audit for me. In the last one year during the pandemic, out of, you know, 10 pieces of advice that people have given you, how many pieces of advice, how many percent have you actually taken? So out of 10 pieces of advice that people have given you, how many, advice, how many pieces of advice have you actually taken and actually used and actually implemented? Everyone. Do an audit for me right now. In the last one year, when people gave you advice, out of 10 advice, berapa you pakai? What kind of advice? Any advice. Any advice. Personal, work, business, whatever. If you take it all into one category, <laughs> Shiba, says, Shiba says two. Two out of 10. That's a 20%. That means eight pieces of advice were wasted <laughs> it just went into the air it becomes wasted breath malina says i use six out of ten which means four <laughs> aisha kata mampus lah <laughs> malah aku nak dengar <laughs> hardly boon gives us a 50 percent Florinda says as far as i can remember 40 percent only so this tells us that if you advise too much um what happens is the coaching might be, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, but no behavior change actually happens or minimal behavior change actually happens. So why is it that we ask questions? Because we want them to figure the problem out. 
we want them to find the solution and we want them to commit to the solution they have to be responsible for it not us once we pick up responsibility they will give everything to you <laughs> they give everything to the coach and say nah you solve my problem but that's not the point of coaching the point of coaching is to create independent critical thinking individuals and this is where coaching can get quite painful uh when i do my coaching i have i've had successes i've had failures there are some people who are totally uncoachable right they they just like a brick wall they don't want to be helped they turn up for coaching thinking that we can solve their problem um but i have to tell them no the point of coaching is for me to help you figure it out i am not here to give you the solutions and they get they can get angry and things like that so i step away and i say well this is the end of our our professional arrangement um i suggest you find another coach because some people can just be very very uncoachable okay so what if ah uh, here's the thing what if you are a boss and you're not just a coach you are a boss and you do have solutions and you you know for a fact um this solution will save the day so what you need to do is when you start the coaching session you are putting them into a position where they are taking responsibility for themselves through the questions that you ask but if you have that solution what you do is you close the session and you say well uh thank you very much for coming for our coaching session uh, i'm going to close the session now um so what are your action plans in the future so you close it then you shift into mentor mode from coaching mode you shift into mentor mode after you close the coaching session and then you say okay now as your supervisor i actually do have a solution to your problem would you like to hear it and they say yes and you say okay now i'm going to give you the solution but you have to promise me that you have to do the solution so if you notice these are two different modes they're like two different gears in a car you have a coaching gear and you have a mentor gear but both cannot mix together yeah it is dangerous to mix both together because you create a very confused individual so in that sense a coachee does not need to be an expert bonus yes but there's also the temptation to actually provide solutions during the coaching session all right how about this next question coaching is a learning and growing process that benefits both the coach and the coachee true or false Okay, looks like this is an easy one. True, 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 true. True. Okay. So, you're right. It is a learning and growing process and if you coach people, you'll find that, you know, um you learn a lot from their sharing uh more sometimes than they learn from you because you're not actually teaching them anything. But through them sharing their issues, through them sharing sharing their problems, um for me, I found myself to be to be faster at problem solving because i've actually helped people work through this okay last one coaching focuses directly on relieving psychological disorders true or false coaching focuses directly on relieving psychological disorders true or false oh thank god <laughs> thank you very much for answering false Okay you are not a counselor unless you are a counselor unless you are a counselor right but if you're not a counselor then coaching cannot deal with mental health issues if you find someone who has suicidal tendencies depression clinical depression go and talk to hr right go and talk to uh, people in in uh, in the authority you need to hand this off okay you you don't attempt this on your own unless you are trained to be able to do this So that's what coaching is and is not. You want to be careful of that because coaching only asks questions, does not provide solutions. So, what are the three most important skill sets for coaching? The first one is listening, second one is observing, the third one is questioning. Okay? So, very important if you don't have the time to coach your coachy or your employee, then you must make time you must schedule a time if you're busy the danger is uh, and and i'm sure this has happened to you before i want you to imagine that uh, you come in to your to talk to your boss and say boss um, i have a problem la boss can i talk to you and the boss is on the laptop going like okay la 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 ah masalah masalah come in come in 
and <laughs> they are on the laptop and they look okay tell me tell me what's the problem so my question guys would you want to share your problem openly honestly and sincerely in that kind of situation yes or no would you want to share your problem no because you're not being given attention you're not being given due due interest so a coachy is in a very sensitive position at that time a very sensitive emotional position you want to give them full attention so if you really cannot give them full attention then what you need to do is say i i i'm i'm sorry i'm getting something done can we meet in about half an hour because if you meet meet half an hour i will give you my full attention i promise all right so be interested in your coach's development because they can see it they can see it in your body language they can see it in your face they can they can listen to it they can hear it in the tone of your voice if you're not interested or worse you you're thinking uh so boring this coaching session why must why must we do this coachings they can see it and uh, what's happening is you're not building rapport you're not building trust and they are not going it's not going to be a good session anyway number 2 is watch for important changes to their facial expression voice intonation and body language this is important especially um when you want to detect whether they are being open with you or not and i'm not talking about telling the truth um uh, telling you everything no no sometimes coaches will say things just to make you feel better okay so especially amongst the amiables they think that they're there to give you the right answers but the right answers are only the ones that help them solve the problem so if you ask them do you have any problems uh, that you like to talk about today um no no problem no problem so what you can say is okay it sounds to me that that there is something so let's start with this what are you comfortable discussing today okay there might be things that you're not comfortable discussing so tell me what are you what are you comfortable discussing first and as you ease them out of their shell slowly bit by bit you can build a uh, rapport with them build an understanding so that it's easier for you and them to be honest with each other okay so don't just take their word at it at face value investigate a little bit more probe a little bit more um for them to be able to give them the opportunity to share number 3 um be aware of your own preconceptions and judgments so our own values you know your our religion our race how we perceive other genders our other ages okay we want to be careful of genderism ageism sometimes even you know or uh, schoolism or you sekolah kat mana dulu or you university kat mana dulu and our perceptions color how we coach them and again they can see it they can see it in our face they can hear it in our voice they can see it in our body language um when we are you know we we have value issues that causes us to not be able to this is this is something that happens to counselors as well it happens to counselors as well definitely it also happens to coaches so we want to to manage that as much as possible also <laughs> because we say coaching is about uh questions and not answers resist the urge bite your tongue to provide any answers last but not least is listen and observe so just for the fun of it i'm going to give you a bit of an exercise to to ask you to identify and test your observation skills okay i will play you a video and in this video there is a dead man on the floor and there is a detective who is trying to figure out who killed the dead man all right however that's not the point of the video the point of the video is while you're watching the video things are actually changing right in front of your eyes they're changing right there okay so i'm actually giving you a heads up i'm actually giving you a clue you need to look for what has changed okay the record is seven things seven things have changed this record is held by ceos so if you manage to get 8 or 9 or 10 then you would have broken the record set by ceos for this video all right so do you understand the instructions yes or no or do you want me to repeat okay so i'm going to repeat just for those who uh, you know are shy <laughs> to to type in repeat i will play you a video and in this video as you're watching it things will change right in front of your eyes 
So you need to have you you need to be very very observant. You need to sharpen your 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 eyes, and watch for what changes. When the video ends, I'm going to ask you to type into the chat what did you notice change. So if you are ready to watch, give me a ready in the chat. If you're ready to watch, give me a ready in the chat. Okay, cool. First, I'm going to test the sound. Tell me if you can hear this. Did you hear that? Yes or no? Okay. So don't worry about the dialogue. The dialogue is not important. Focus on what you see. All right. Here we go. Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, sir. Why, I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. But, but, but how did you know? Madam, as any horticulturist will tell you, one does not plant petunias until May is out. Take her away. That's right, madam. It's just a matter of observation. The real question is how observant were you? All right. Uh, you have one minute. Tell me in the chat, what did you notice change? Let's see if we can collect... More than seven. Here we go. What did you notice change? Some people are probably sitting there like, what? I didn't notice anything. <laughs> okay. So what did you notice change? Let's see what pops up in the chat. Everybody's waiting for everybody else's answer. Is nobody going to type? Okay, Dr. Shiba says the candle holder. All right, I'll give you that. So the butler was originally holding a uh, roller, right? A baking roller. And now he's holding a candle holder, candlestick. Okay, that's one. Six more to go. <laughs> or if you want to beat the record, seven more to go. Aisha says the bear. Okay, that's two. The color of the constable's outfit, that's three. The clock besides a murdered man, that's four. Well done. Polinda says the flower, that's one. That makes five. The bear, covered. Baking roller, covered. Detective's coat, covered. Okay, Malina, object next to the body is the clock, covered. Detective's coat, covered. The body, inner shirt, color, uh, actually, oh, that's part of it. Body handkerchief, color, also part of it. Okay, so body. So that means six. Okay, so once we touch about the body or the, the, the dead person on the floor, it's considered one. So that's six. So we have, we have six now. If you can find two more, you would have broken the record. Okay, I'll give you a countdown. Five, four, three, something on the wall. <laughs> that's not fair. Tell me what it is on the wall. No! <laughs> this is life, right? Life comes at you once. You can't play it again. <laughs> All right, Dr. Shiba, I'll give that to you. Something on the wall that makes seven. Okay, the deer head. Okay, so that's seven. So I'll be generous and say, yes, there was something else on the wall. And that makes eight. So I'm going to, oh, okay, you, you caught it, the portrait. So you have managed to break the CEO record, long-standing record. Not bad, guys. Fantastic. Now, do you want to see the, the, the video again? <laughs> okay, here we go. Watch very carefully. I'm going to show you from a different angle. Did you notice the 21 changes? Here we go. Uh, action. Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. 
I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, so. Well, I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So, um, we've talked about observation skills. We've talked about listening skills. Now, let's talk a little bit about questioning skills. And in questioning skills, there are a few rules in coaching. Number one is we say only ask open-ended questions. And I assume, I assume that everyone understands the difference between closed-ended and open-ended questions. Closed-ended questions are any questions that can only be answered with a yes or no. Okay, so um, have, you, have you had dinner? No. Have you had breakfast? Yes. That's it. So we want to promote a conversation. And the only way to promote a conversation is by using open-ended questions. What's your opinion on the recent um, you know, issues we're face facing in our elections in Malaysia? So that is a question, an open-ended question that gets people talking. But if you ask a closed-ended question, who are you voting for? Then you only get a, a short answer and that's, that's it. So remember that in the coaching conversation, you want to keep the client or the coachee talking. What do you mean cheating? That's not cheating. <laughs> that is cheating. <laughs> okay, that's the first one. Number two, please remember, please, 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 please remember, do not provide opinions. Do not provide suggestions. I have, I've seen some coaching sessions where the coach, you know, when the coachee is talking, or oh, I went to... Um, I went to Gunung Kinabalu recently and then the coach was like, oh yeah ke? You went Kinabalu eh? I also went Kinabalu last year lah. And the coach takes over the conversation. So when that happens, the coachee does not want to talk anymore. So think about, think back to all those times when somebody interrupted you, yeah? And you did not feel the momentum to speak, to share anymore. Please remember that the coachee has come to you in a very vulnerable position. The coachee needs your help to be able to think through a, a problem but when you take over the conversation and you make it about you then uh, there's a possibility they don't want to engage you anymore they don't want to ask for your help anymore that's number two number three is whenever your coach says something to you you paraphrase to confirm understanding so i shall also assume every no everybody knows what paraphrasing is it is listening to what the coach says and then repeating it in your own words you process it, you repeat it in your own words. So my question, tell me in the chat, what is the benefit of paraphrasing? What is the benefit, what is the good uh, about paraphrasing, especially in a coaching session? What does the client or the coachee feel when you paraphrase back to them what they've said? Okay, Dr. Shiba says, reconfirmation. Okay, thank you. Anything else? What does the coachee feel? What if you're telling me something about your life, right? And then I repeat back to you what I heard. Yes. They feel that they are being listened to. They feel that you're paying attention to them. They feel that you're interested in them. And this, the human condition, right? The human condition is that people want to be listened to. Even though some people might say, oh, I'm introverted, la, my life story not interesting, la, things like that. But I spent seven years as a journalist. And the one thing I learned very, very well from my editor, he said this to me. He said, Nazrin, everybody has a story to tell. Don't believe them when they say my, my life story is uninteresting or you know, it's, uh, I've not done anything, anything special in my life. He says, Nazrin, everybody has a story to tell. Be the kind of person that they want to tell that story to. And I, I've held on to that uh, all these years. What is the kind of person that people will tell their stories to? It is the kind of person who listens, who looks, pays attention, does not interrupt, ask questions that are interesting to get them to share some more, ask questions that are open-ended, does not provide suggestions or opinions, and paraphrases back to them to as evidence that they are paying attention. So imagine if you could do this with a human being. Can you imagine the amount of influence that you will have over them? This is how we build rapport. This is how we build influence with another human being. Pay attention to them. Give them that, that, that time and give them that space to be able to share 
without judgment. What is important here is you cannot judge. Because if you judge, remember we said your values come into play, that's going to be problematic. Yeah, and, and I, I'm, I'm saying I've, I've had to struggle with some of this myself, um, especially when uh, I told you I was with a company called Accenture. And Accenture has staff from all over the world. So I've had uh, coaches who are Israeli. I've had coaches who uh, were lesbians, homosexuals. And that impacted my values. But I had to be professional and I go, okay, whatever my values are, however I interact where I come from, being Malaysian, being Muslim, being Malay, I cannot allow that to, to get in the way of my, my professionalism as a coach. So I had to... I had before I fix them, I had to fix myself first. So coaching is not easy, I'll say it, because uh, as they share with us, our brain are also thinking, also processing, and there's a danger that we might accidentally um, judge the coachee, which is very, very dangerous because why they can see it. And worse off, it skews your objectivity. It, it removes, uh, uh, you know, it messes with your objectivity totally, and you can't help them. It is difficult to help them. So, these three things. Last one is a technique we call peel the onion. How do we get the, the coachee to continue talking? We ask them a question and we listen to the answer. We don't prepare the second question. We ask the second question based on the answer that they give. So this is what we call peeling the onion. We want to probe, probe, probe all the way until we get to the source of the problem. Or we probe, probe until we get to a solution. If no, normally, if uh, you know, some people, what they do, they have a list, list of questions that they want to ask. It's a list of questions they want to ask. So they will just rattle off, like, okay, question one, question two, question three, question four. Coaching doesn't work like that. Coaching is an interaction between the coach and the coachee. And you ask relevant questions based on their problem, based on their issues. So if I were to give an analogy, it's like Tai Chi, right? It's Tai Chi or Aikido, where you are playing against somebody else you are reacting and responding against their information that they give you. It is not boxing where you are reading off all of the questions that you have prepared beforehand. Okay, so I hope you understand that. Interaction, engagement is very important in coaching. And it gets very tiring for a coach as well because your brain is on, like on at 100% all the time. You need to observe, you need to listen, and you need to respond as well. Okay, so... In as short a time as, you know, less than, than an hour and a half, um, I want to say that coaching is vast. There are many, many coaching structures. There are many different types of questions. There's hypnotic questions. There is, uh, you know, performance-based questions. There's emotional-based chunking. There is all sorts of stuff up there. But I want to start you off on something simple. This is what we call the GROW model or GROW model and is usually used for performance coaching. So when somebody comes to you with a problem uh, with their work performance, we can certainly use the GROW. It is by far the simplest coaching model out there. So it's always a good, good way to start with this one. Okay, so when you start your coaching session with someone, of course you do, you know, the, 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 the small talk like, hey, how are you? Thank you for coming. Hey, uh, how you been? So I heard you went for holiday and blah, 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 things like that. And then when you are ready, then you go, okay, shall we begin? Okay. So my first question is, um, what are you here for today? What do you want to achieve? Now, note this, that uh, sometimes we can start with a question, what's the problem that you're facing? And then they start explaining. So we give them that space to, to share their problems a little bit. But after that, and don't wait too long, you want to jump into the first question, which is the G of the GROW. What do you want to achieve? Why? Because if we allow them to talk only about their problems, they're not going anywhere. That's what got them stuck in the first place. So one of the ways for us to get clarity in their heads, we ask uh, very specific high-powered questions to get them to figure it out. Now, um, this question is very powerful. What are you trying to achieve? Eh, uh, but my problem, okay, if, I, I understand you have a problem, but what are you really trying to achieve? What do you want to get out of this? And if you remember, if you have ever shared a house with a housemate, okay, I'm going to ask you, if you've ever been single 
and you shared a housemate. You, uh, you shared a house. You rented a house with a housemate, and this housemate, you know, um, very close friends with you, and you were depressed, or maybe you lost uh, a loved one. You know, broke up, uh, lost a job, or something, and you just couldn't move. You just sat there and you just cried, uh, or you did not. You did not want to do anything that day. And one of your housemates, you know, gets fed up, and she or he comes up to you and says, "Sebenarnya kau nak apa? What do you want?" <laughs> and the question is the exact same goals question. It shocks us into shifting from a, a problem-based mindset to a solution-based mindset, and this is the most first critical step. We need to shift their mindset from problem-based. To solution based, and the best way to do that is to ask them. Sebenarnya apa yang you nak? What do you want to achieve? And if they can clarify the goal, if the goal is so clear in their heads, okay, then we can move on to the second question, which is okay, reality. Where are we starting from? Tell me your situation. Tell me your strengths. Tell me your weaknesses. What are the challenges you're facing, internal and external? Okay, maybe the external challenge is family. My family members don't want to allow me to to try for a new job. Okay, what about internal? Internal challenges. Well, I feel like uh, I failed so much in so previous jobs. Should I try for another job? Uh, so these are some of the things that's holding me back. So number one, goals. What are the things that you want to achieve? And then second, what is the reality? Is the reality positive or negative? What strengths do you have? How much money do you have? What what can you have that can contribute to the solution, and what's holding you back from that solution? So it is your strengths and your challenges. Number three is options. Okay, now we move away from the problem and we consider solutions, actual solutions. Options tends to be, in in my experience, the place where they spend the longest amount of time. Lama. Because why they're exploring this one and that one and that one and that one and that one. Now here is critical for you to not give solutions, not at all. I know you be tempted to get lidah na with solution, yeah? but do not give any solutions. Uh, if if you want to give after you close the W, after you close the coaching session, then you move into mentor mode. But at this point in time, do not, because they are in a hypnotic state where they are suggestible to ideas. So they're trying to look for ideas. If you give a solution right now, their brain will clamp onto it. They will shut down everything else. They will shut down their solution solution factory and only hold on to your solution. So here we need to get them to brainstorm. Sometimes uh, I hit this kind of situation. So I tak tahu lah bang. Saya dah buntu lah. Tak ada idea lah. Nak nak tak tanya tak ada idea lah. Tak ada idea lah. Okay. So what we do is we stop the coaching session there. Okay. And we move on to will and say okay. Now, if you don't know, kalau you tak ada option, you tak ada idea, I want to ask you this question: Who or where can you get ideas from that can help you? And and you want them to say things like my friends or my mother or my father or my family or my boss or my teacher. You want them to say that, and then you say okay. So if you say that these are the people who can help you. What do you think you can do? Notice, it's all just questions. It is still questions, if you notice. Yeah, it is still questions. I'm still not giving any suggestions. So, if these are the people who who you say can help you find this these answers, so what do you think you should do with them? And you're waiting for them to say, "I think I will go and ask for their advice." Yes. Why? <laughs> Let them ask for other people's advice. They don't come to you for your advice. Very dangerous because you're the coach. So the will here, if they cannot find options, fine. You move into will and you get them to commit to take an action. This is the most important part of coaching. Okay, they must commit to take action. They must be accountable. And what you do here is, if it's a proper coaching process, you say, okay. So you have told me that you are going to ask your family members for their opinions and their ideas. Now my question is. When are we going to meet next? I am available next week on this date. Shall we meet then? Okay. If we meet then, I'm going to ask you the question: What have you done? So please get something done before now and the next time we meet. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you next coaching session.
bye bye okay so this is the four step grow model now i have a video that i'm going to show you that will illustrate this even further and this is a very simple simple grow um, i'll do my best to have the volume maximized but if you don't hear it well i want you to maximize the volume on your side okay so i will play the video but also pause 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 in between at each and every one and i'll narrate a little bit so are you ready to watch the video yes or no all right okay so put in your earphones and listen very carefully here we go hi chris how are you not very good i'm afraid um I've got a problem, a real problem, and I'm getting really stressed about it. Hmm. It doesn't sound good. Tell me what the problem is. Well, I've got this report to write, um, and it's got to be done by next Friday. And I put some time aside to do it, but I just haven't managed to get round to doing it. I'm so, there's so much going on at the moment. Hmm. I've been doing lots of trainings, I've got lots of meetings, and it just isn't time. And, well, now, because next week's so busy, I can't see how I'm even going to get this report done. Hmm. How big? Okay, so Chris has come to, to her coach and says, I have a problem. And the coach says, what's your problem? And she says, well, I have a report that I need to write. And I set some time aside, but I've been procrastinating. I've not actually got around to the report. Now, here's a problem. Next week, I'll be very busy with trainings and meetings and stuff. <gasps> how am I going to get this done? So now her coach is going to continue her... Uh, uh, her, uh, her questions and as you see she's going to start moving into GROW soon here we go what is this report well it's it's going to be about it's going to take me about half a day to do it's about nine to ten pages right okay so just clarify for me exactly what has to be done by when okay so her question is what is the goal what needs to be done by when what are the KPIs what are the requirements so if she can clarify the goal enough, then she can move on to the next step, which is reality. So let's listen. Right, so I've got a nine to 10 page report that has to be, that's gonna take about half a day to do, and it has to be done by a week on Friday. Okay, so that sounds quite a lot considering what you've got on. Um, just tell me a bit about how your week is at the moment, what's going on for you? All right. So she's asking, now that she knows the goal, the goal is, a, I think, a 12-page report. <laughs> it has to be done uh, by a certain, certain time. And then the coach goes into, okay, tell me what's, what's your week like? What's the reality? What's the, 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 the things that are happening right now that can either help or hinder um, this, this job? Okay, so here we go. Hi, Chris. How are you? Oh. Not very good. Sorry pages right okay so just clarify for me exactly what has to be okay so that's goal done now she's moving into reality a week on friday okay so that sounds quite a lot considering what you've got on um just tell me a bit about how your week is at the moment what's going on for you okay so now she moves into r it's crazy i've got monday and tuesday i'm out doing team building with mm -hmm. groups of people all over the place um Wednesday, I've got a meeting in Barnstable in the morning, Tiverton in the afternoon. So that means I don't even get into the office until Thursday. And then, of course, when I get in there, I'll have all my emails and my phone calls and things to do. Mm. Plus, my line manager wants to see me. So I can't even see myself getting this started until Thursday afternoon at the very earliest. And that's too late. I'm going to be so stressed. Mm -hmm. It does sound pretty tight for time, I have to say. It is. Okay, so why don't we just think about all the possible options of ways that you could potentially achieve this? Okay, so now she's going to move into O. Um, hey, kakak ni, procrastinate betul lah. So now, watch as how the coach asks questions and she creates a safe environment for Chris to uh, give crazy, crazy ideas. Because when options are concerned, we are brainstorming. And if... If we're not going crazy, we're not going out of the box, then we're not doing our job. Because if she could find the solution on her own, she would have done that already. Our job is to get her to think outside of the normal parameters, things that she has not figured out, things that she never thought of 
options that could actually help solve a problem. So watch this very carefully. Listen to the coach's questions. As she asks a question, listen to the, the answer and ask another question that's related. She's peeling the onion. Here we go. Now, it could be crazy options, okay? It doesn't mean you have to gonna follow through with all of them. We just want to get all of the different possibilities out on the table. Crazy so start options. Start off by telling me what are the things that you could do to get this done? Um, well, I suppose I could not do the report. That would be nice. Okay, crazy you know, option I mean, number one. I don't think that would go down very well though. Right. Uh, what else? Well, I, I suppose I could ask my boss to, to put back the deadline. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I don't think that would look very good. OK, so put back the deadline. I'm just going to note them down as we go through, OK? OK. Um, what else could I do? Um, OK, I've got... The meeting's on Wednesday. I could either cancel one mm -hmm. or I could see if I could get somebody to cover for me. In fact, my, my colleague might be able to cover for me on the one in the afternoon right. in Tiverton. Yeah, okay. that might be possible. Mm. So you could cancel a meeting or get your colleague to cover? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so w what else could you do? Um, well, I suppose I could get somebody else to write the report for me. Yeah. Uh, but by the time I explained it to the person and shown them what to do, I probably could have done it myself in the first place. So I'm not sure that would really be much use to me. No, OK, mm -hmm. but an option. So you mm -hmm. could get someone else to write it. Yeah. OK. OK, watch carefully. She's filtering. Chris is already filtering. Oh, this is idea, but oh, this idea is not so good. What the coach is doing is, no worries, let's write down. Let's write down the other the options because you never know an option that you thought was useless could actually be the one that solves the problem. So the coach is doing her best to be positive for the coach, for the coachee, to make sure that, you know, it's okay. If, if you think it's, just write it down. Let's, let's see what we can do with it later. Okay, so let's continue. One more. <laughs> She's asking one more. One more, one more uh, option, please. Um, I could take the report home mm -hmm. and um, do it in the evening. But actually, that wouldn't be very popular with my family because I've, I've made a commitment not to do that anymore. Okay. okay. But I could do that. So as an option, it's possible. Yeah. You could take the report I'm to do in the evening. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go back over some of the options you've mm -hmm. come up with and summarise for summarise them back again, okay? So um, you could not do the report at all. All right. Yeah. You could get someone else to write it for you. Mm -hmm. um, you could ask your boss to extend the deadline, possibly. Yeah. You could maybe cancel your meeting on Wednesday afternoon or get your colleague to cover for you, mm -hmm. which would give you some time. And then there is the option of taking it home, but obviously that affects your work-life balance and isn't yeah. good for you and your family. So out of those options, which one seems the most realistic for you? Okay, look at the coach. She's written down to prove that she's paid attention to everything that Chris has said. Okay, she's very, very sensitive. She, she wanna make sure that everything that Chris says is important to her. Therefore, we must write it down. Therefore, we must be able to paraphrase it back to her. Okay, so now she's going to ask, out of all of these options, which do you think is uh, best suited to you? Let's take forwards. Um, I quite like the idea of cancelling or, or getting my colleague to stand in for me on mm -hmm. my meeting on Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Because if I did that, that would mean I'd start the report a day earlier. Mm -hmm. And then if I didn't get it finished, mm -hmm. then I'd have the next day to finish it. So there'd be a lot less stress there. Mm. So actually, I like that one best, I think. Okay, so that, yeah. sounds, that sounds all possible. Yeah. So just as a contingency, though, what, what would um, happen if your colleague wasn't able to cover? What could oh. you do? I don't know. I suppose... I suppose I'd have to do it on the Thursday then, and um, I'd just have to make sure that there weren't any distractions and that, you know, I could just get on with it. Okay. okay. Right, now to close off with an action plan. 
So on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least likely it's going to happen mm. and 10 being you're absolutely going to go ahead with the action you've come up with, yeah. whereabouts are you? I think I'm about 7. A 7. Okay, 7's good. But what, what would need to happen to make it a 10 so that you'd be definite? Mm. Okay, so what the coach is asking now, now you say that you want to get your colleague to replace you in the meeting. Um, so are you definitely going to do this? If yes, give me a 10, or you're not going to do it all, give me a zero. So where are you right now? And Chris says, I'm at about seven. So now her coach goes, hang on a sec. Seven is a number, it's a nice number, but how, what can we do for it to become a 10? What would you require for, for that commitment from you to go from seven to 10? So what does Chris say? Don't know really. Um... I suppose if we agreed that I, I, I could tell you when I've done it, mm -hmm. then that would definitely make me do it because I, I would know then I had to do it. Okay, so having someone accountable. Yeah. And you'd like me to do that. Yeah, okay. If you don't mind. No, okay, that's fine. So I can, you can um, give me a call and let me know exactly when you need to have taken that action. Yeah. yeah. So how do you feel about getting the report done now? Really good, actually. I, I hadn't thought of those possibilities. And um, it was, it all seemed too much. And now it's, it seems a lot simpler. It's clarified it for me. Mm -hmm. It feels as if I can do it. So thank you very much. Brilliant. That's no, my pleasure. Okay. So we better start to think about getting another date in the yeah. diary. Okay. And um, you letting me know when you'll be able to get in touch with me to let me know you've done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should be able to do that actually after this. And mm -hmm. Right. Hi, Chris. So what you've seen there is. The GROW process from G-R-O-N-W, and that's the simplest coaching process out there. And I would say that if you start with this and you practice this with your people, practice with, with, with you know, your children, practice this with your husband and wives, uh, uh, and you'll find that, don't tell them the process, lah. don't tell them, now I'm going to ask you about your goals. No, you practice it with them and you'll realize that it actually helps people to clarify their problems. So their head is a mess, right? It's, there's problems, 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 problems. These questions help them to figure it out. And as Chris said, I never thought about those options until you asked me about them, right? So ladies and gentlemen, that has taken us all the way to the end of today. We have covered four topics today, people drive. We've covered social styles. We have covered leadership styles, leadership and coaching for growth. So before we go, I'd like to say thank you. But also, I want to ask you, what do you want to do, right, moving forward now that you know these four things? So I'm going to give you two, I'll give you three minutes. Please tell me in the chat, okay, what do you think or plan to do with this new knowledge that you have uh, in the next week or in the next month or so? So please tell me in the chat, what will you do? In the meantime, as promised, here is my phone number and here is my email address. Anybody who WhatsApps me or emails me, I will send them the slides. Okay, so hang on a sec. Okay, that's my email address. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Aisha says, share the knowledge with my friends. So that's my phone number and my email address. If you want the slides, you just WhatsApp me and I'll send it to you. Here, Dr. Shiba says, try applying in real life with real people. Thank you. Two more minutes to go. Let's see who else. So Linda says, take a look back at my way and adapt the things I learned. Yes, I'm not expecting you to use everything at one go. Uh, but definitely start with something small. Maybe start with people drivers, yeah, MAPS, and then work your way to the more complex ones, which is coaching. Okay, one more minute to go. Ching says practice in real life. Okay, thank you.
All right. It is five minutes to five o'clock. And I would like to thank you very much for, for being here with me. Most of you have been with me for the whole day. So I appreciate that very much. I know you have a lot of work to get done. And I know sometimes, you know, your boss <laughs> gives you work in between. Uh, so thank you very much for paying attention. Uh, okay, Marina says, may know the question. The question is, what do you plan to do with whatever you've learned today? What do you plan to do now with whatever you've learned today? Sure, we can get a group photo. Uh, but that requires everyone turn on the camera. Lah. <laughs> okay, Boon says, know myself and observe, start asking questions. Cool. All right, I have my camera on already. So let's see who else would like to have their cameras on. Hello, Doctor. Dr. Ilhami, I get to actually see you now. Because previously we only chatted on WhatsApp and and yes. uh, on, on, on email. Shahidra, yeah. I see your carpet. <laughs> okay, Ching, number two, Karambo, number two. All right. Everyone get ready in five seconds. Okay. Right. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I believe in the chat there is a, a feedback form for you to fill in. So please do that for for uh, for UM. And if we see each other again online or offline face to face, uh, remind me where we met. Say hello. Uh, I wish all the best for you for your careers and for your your leadership. I know it's not easy. The pandemic is not easy. So I'll say stay safe and stay healthy wherever you are. Have a good day. Have a good weekend coming up. Bye bye everyone. And uh, happy school holidays for those who are going around. Please stay safe. Thanks so much, Cik Nazrin. Thanks You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Nazrin. Great session. Bye. Bye. See you.